Can you hear me in the back? All right. I was uh, trying to put the finishing touches on my speech at our table, but I was blinded by Ali Marpet's Super Bowl ring. <laughs> Check it out. I'll have to make do with what I've got. I want to thank the Statesman Athletic Association for everything you do for Hobart Athletics and selecting me for this honor. Coach Yurik used to remind us that you go from who's who to who's he to who cares, which is where I am now. Thanks to the SAA, I get to be a who's who for one more day. A special mention to Joe Corcoran, president of the SAA. You need someone to advocate for you for this honor, and I believe Joe did that for me. After Joe graduated, I took his number, 16, because I admired him so much and also because he gave me his bartending job at the Cedar Inn. <laughs> I congratulate you, Joe, on being a great man, and I thank you for being a friend. I'm also enjoying uh, basking in the reflected glory of being a part of this Hall of Fame class. I want to congratulate each and every one of my fellow inductees. Well done, well deserved. I'm proud to be associated with all of you. And I especially want to thank my, my friends and family uh, for being here. My children here have traveled from Boston and New York. My sisters and brothers having traveled from as far away as Maine and Colorado. My nephew CJ, who's a Hobart grad, is here from New York City. And so many uh, elder statesmen came out, dozens of them, Mike Koenig asked me to, to mention that he came here to see me at great personal expense. So I, I'm mentioning that, Mike. Um, Sean Fox's widow, Kristen, is here from Rhode Island. Uh, Tom Rosa and Danny Whalen were at my induction into the Upstate Chapter uh, Lacrosse Hall of Fame last fall. So for some reason, they're doubling up on my speeches. Um, but this is a wonderful event, but it, it doesn't mean anything unless you've got uh, great people to share it with. It means so much more that uh, all of you came from all over the country. I'm so grateful you're all here, and I love you all very much. I grew up in uh, Cortland, New York, and in fact, one of the first college lacrosse games I saw was Hobart versus Cortland. It was quite an experience for a 14-year-old kid to go to these games where there was often a keg in the stands. I got my first taste of Mad Dog 2020 and Boone's Farm Strawberry Hill. That stuff is awful. Uh, it's made right down the street here in Canandaigua. Um, but I did get to see uh, Ricky Gilbert play, and I thought maybe this is a sport that I should get involved in. I want to thank my wife, Heather, for putting up with me and especially putting up with my Hobart friends. Uh, Heather and I were married in our favorite place, Lake Placid, uh, she told me that the uh, wedding date was going to be the first week of August. I said nothing. I had nothing to do with this, but it turns out it was the same week as the Lake Placid 55 and over lacrosse tournament. So I got married, and a couple days later, I got to play lacrosse. It was a perfect, perfect week, and I'm probably the only person here who can say that he was playing lacrosse on his honeymoon. And I do love this game. Um, when we were up in Lake Placid, um, <laughs> the elder statesmen were tailgating pretty hard, and she says, is this why you like Lake Placid? You come here, you play lacrosse, and you drink beer in the parking lot. And uh, I said, well, we also have whiskey and Mike Greco's homemade wine. Uh, she says, no, no, you're not getting it. You come to one of the most beautiful places in the world, and you come and drink beer in a parking lot right next to the town dump. And I said, oh, is that what that smell is? I thought it was just some guys from Cornell and Syracuse. <laughs> I, used to, uh, <laughs> I used to say that, that I would keep playing lacrosse until they had to carry me off the field. After a couple of heart attacks, that is not so funny. Uh, it could happen. Um, and uh, so I, I think I'm going to have to hang up the cleats finally. Um, the main reason that I'm here tonight is that I had the greatest teammates and the greatest coaches anyone could ever ask for. 
Jerry Schmidt, Dave Urich, Tom Korn, B.J. O'Hara, Terry Corcoran, Hank Janzik. They're all multiple-time coaches of the year in all sorts of halls of fame, including this one. And when I visited Hobart, I realized it was a, going to be a great a place to play. I was thinking of going to Cornell, and the coach there wanted to convert me to defense. I played attack in high school, and uh, why would you know? I was 17 years old. Why would I listen to the Hall of Fame coach from Cornell? This was the mid 70s, and anybody over 30, their judgment was very suspect. So I came to Hobart, and I remember my senior year. I went to an economics class in Albright Auditorium, and given my academic record, this was a questionable recruiting strategy. And during the uh, lecture, uh, all of a sudden, kids started blurting out, lacrosse game, lacrosse game. And uh, after a, a little while, the professor relented. He let the class out early so the students could get to the bars for face-off. And I thought this, maybe this is a good place to play. Um, and I found out that it was. Um, my teammates, when I got here, having converted positions, I think I learned more from you know, people that I was competing with for playing time in the back of the line than I learned about lacrosse in you know, the rest of my career combined. And playing defense here at Hobart, even though you didn't get to score too many goals, I scored a few, uh, was a super fun place to play um, just because of the style of play that we liked. And to give you an idea of what it was like uh, at Hobart at that time, when I arrived on campus, there were tons of good players. Pee Pee Potoso was on attack. I don't, what was I thinking, trying to outplay him for playing time? Um, and my, my floor in Cheryl Hall had two high school All-Americans on it. I did not even know at that time that they had high school All-Americans. And there were about 750 men total here at Hobart. My freshman year, 125 of those men tried out for the varsity right here in this room. And uh, there were others. My resident advisor was a senior from Baltimore, good player. He had played for a couple of years, decided he wasn't going to try out. So on top of all those people who tried out, there were other people on campus who were tremendous lacrosse players. I thought, I'm not going to make the team. I'm going to get cut. Uh, another friend wanted to be a doctor, so he wanted to focus on his, his studies and decided not to come out. What kind of nonsense is that? Um, and I just couldn't believe the talent that was here. Um, I remember the first time I touched the ball as a Hobart lacrosse player, right over there. And it was one-on-one, -on -one, and I think Coach Schmidt wanted to switch me to defense too. So when I got it, it got to be my turn to go, he pointed at a guy named Ed Howard, who was in this Hall of Fame and was the New York State uh, champion in the 220 and when he was in high school, a tremendous athlete. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, what have I done? So after that practice, I went up to Coach Schmidt and I said, uh, I'd like to try out for midfield as well as attack. And I think I'd like to try out for defense too. <laughs> And I would have tried out for goalie if they let me, because I, I really I wanted to make the team. Um, and it was um, a real challenge. Um, until today, until this, this evening, uh, the biggest thrill that I had as a Hobart lacrosse player was not winning the national championships. It was not when they called my name as the outstanding lacrosse player in the nation in 1982. The biggest thrill I had as a Hobart lacrosse player was when I walked up here to Bristol Gym to Coach Schmidt's office right up there, and I saw my name on the list of people who made the team. I'll close by saying the same thing I always say when I speak here. Over the years, I've worked with some great companies and organizations. I'm admitted to practice law in the United States Supreme Court, so I get to see a lot of dogs with fancy pedigrees. I never met a better group of people and the ones I met right here. So when we had the opportunity to sponsor lockers when the lacrosse locker room was reconstructed, you could have a plaque with your name on it and some playing information. So a lot of guys put down, you know, two-time All-American, Tackman of the Year, things like that. I simply put uh, Kevin Martin, Captain, 1982. Being recognized as an All-American is great, 
But the most important thing for me was to be recognized by the guys in that locker room who are now my lifelong friends. So being recognized here today by my Hobart peers is particularly wonderful. I'm so thankful and proud to have been selected for this honor. Thank you, and may God bless all here.